Let's go. So the second part of our film study of the UCLA defense, we broke down their terminology, the Raider defensive end, the striker, all those different things. And the question that we asked at the end of the film study was, should LSU run the football a little more? And what we see here is one of the few run plays that Hawaii actually ran between the tackles. They pull a guard around, and they were able to get a pretty nice gain here of uh, six or seven yards with the help of the offensive line pushing the pile. So this is going to be the question that Jake Peets is going to have to answer. If UCLA shows you so many different light fronts, uh, let, why not run against it? Once again, on a third and four, when you're down 28, when it's two down territory, I probably would have ran it again here. But instead, we get a twist up here. Uh, we have a flag for whatever reason. Now we bring a corner blitz. Uh, Hawaii's quarterback is just trying to find somebody. And here's the thing. This is why it's so tough to scramble against this group. Because they're so light and athletic in the front, when you scramble and break pressure, it is really hard uh, to improvise and make a play. And once again, hammers home the point from yesterday that <sighs> Max Johnson, he, he's a good scrambler. He's not an elite scrambler. He doesn't have elite speed. So uh, the QB scrambles are, are going to be tough to come by. All right, here we go. Second and six. Low snap. And we run a draw, okay? Cutback angles right there, and there you go. The runs will be there, okay? And I'm not much of a uh, you got to establish a run kind of guy, but <laughs> once again, it will help counter their fast pass rushers. And honestly, UCLA doesn't have like uh, a Von Miller sack master type. They're just very, very, very active up front. There's a second and 10. Okay, looks like we're running again here. But no, the running game sets up the pass. And we hit him right over the middle for 15 yards. Once again, Max Johnson's best area of the field was over the middle on 11 to 20 yard routes. He was seven of seven on those types of throws. So here we are, it's third and goal. The running back motioned out here and the DB stayed with them. So more than likely this is gonna be zone coverage. UCLA was not really effective with their three man rush. Part of the play here though, once again, I know this wasn't a trip in the open field per se. This was more of a knockdown, but their players struggled to keep their feet. They tripped a lot, uh, UCLA. But that was more of him just getting knocked down. So this three-man rush gets broken, and we drop a touchdown here. Perfect throw. You want that throw to be low where only your receiver can get it, and he dropped it. Okay? So a takeaway here is UCLA was not really that effective with their three-man rush. All right, 31-3 to with 40 seconds left to go. It's a third and one. And uh, once again, if you're UCLA, you don't mind them running the football, understanding time and situation. But still, this is a perfectly executed play uh, on this third and one right here. Okay, defensive end crashes down hard. He's unblocked. Left tackle gets a great double. Look at all this movement they are getting on this play side uh, uh, defensive end here. And uh, just look at this. Okay? Good movement. Got a great double. And this end crashes, and we keep it. Their front can get blocked. Okay? They are very blockable, especially in the run game. Zone read game, good job. And then just find some yards. Okay, I understand it's the end of the half and they're playing very conservatively, which you should be doing. Uh, obviously, the fumble, good job by Hawaii just jumping right on it. Boom! So before I show you the next play, uh, the tackle on the play that we're about to break down was by these two guys. Okay, These two guys actually made the play. And I want you, and once again, UCLA does a really good job disguising their personnel. One of these guys is a linebacker. 
and one of these guys is a defensive back, okay? So right now in the chat, if you're watching this on Premiere, let me know which one is the linebacker and which one is the defensive back. I want to tell you, uh, thank you guys for all the support. I want to get to 5,000 subscribers before the season begins, so go on ahead and get to it. And if you want to play fantasy football with me while also supporting the channel, take a look at the description down below. So the answer is neither, okay? Both of these guys are actually defensive ends. And while it doesn't look it because they're both wearing D-back numbers, uh, and they both honestly look like a D-back or potentially a hybrid linebacker, uh, it goes to show you what UCLA has done with their personnel. Okay, so we go back to the first quarter here. 3.48 left to go. And uh, here is 35, I believe, and this is 25. And honestly, I I'm actually made a mistake. You'll see here that 35 on this play actually gets dominated by this left tackle. But... You guys have been seeing him. He is the thumbnail image for a reason. Our guy number 74 had a rough go at it. Okay, the right tackle for Hawaii. And in this case, this is going to be Austin Deculus. Okay? So, the one thing this defensive end did a good job of, and once again, UCLA doesn't have elite pass rushers, but they have a ton of guys with extremely high motors. In other words, they are fresh, and they don't give up, and they're really good at running and chasing. Uh, think watered-down Kele Von Chasons, basically. Not quite that level of player, but they're really good, okay? So what essentially happens here is on this second and seven, the right tackle, who, like Austin Deculus, has a tendency to give up the edge against lighter rushers, kind of oversteps and loses his technique. And this defensive end did a really good job. When you're a pass rusher and you get even with the quarterback and you think he's going to step up and the defensive end is, try is trying to not let you go outside, you retrace your steps and go inside which is essentially what happened. This is going to be a big game for Austin Deculus because these are the kind of guys that he has struggled to block during his career, okay? Right, so even it, when 35 got knocked down to the ground, see how quickly he got back up? So if the quarterback would have gotten out of this sack, 35 would have still been able to chase him down. All righty, so 19 seconds left to go in the first. You guys have already seen what happened in the second quarter, but let's go ahead and run out uh, this first quarter, uh, first quarter clock. Okay, here's 74, our guy again, and this time gives up a little too much of the edge, but he does a good job allowing his quarterback to step up in the pocket and riding this guy upfield. Good stuff. Good stuff from both tackles. Left tackle didn't have that bad of a game. Ride him upfield, step up in the pocket. Good job of the QB stepping him in the pocket with two hands on the ball. We evade the pressure, so decent protection, all things considered, not the absolute best, but our quarterback is rolling out making a play, and he throws a dart on his off foot. I mean, was that freaking Patrick Mahomes right there? Are you freaking kidding me? But you notice right here, the key was his right tackle making an adjustment. 45 tries to hit him with a little shake and bake, and you just ride him upfield, Dan. Alrighty, so these final two plays are also really fun. I hope you're having a good time with this. This might be boring uh, for a lot of people. So uh, here we go. Uh, this is a very interesting look from UCLA. Okay, so as you guys learned yesterday, uh, this is the Raider defensive end. Their, we their boundary side defensive end is always in a two-point stance. And remember, Hawaii struggled a lot with this when... UCLA would stem their front. And I want you to see how much changes post-snap after this motion. This is ridiculous. I, I am really shocked at how advanced uh, UCLA's defensive calls are. Okay? All right. I, and I'm actually going to bring it back just to show you all the different things that they did uh, to force this, uh, this scramble here on third and long. 
And this is what happens when you have two really good defensive coordinators, okay? So the way it works for UCLA is they have a, a, a defensive coordinator who calls the fronts, okay, who focuses on the fronts. And that's Steve Adiza. I, I can't, I forgot his last name. But the guy who coaches the secondary is Brian Norwood, okay, who ironically played his college football at Hawaii. And you are the mediocre Hawaii quarterback down by 21. You got an offensive line that's struggling here, okay? So notice what happens here. UCLA checks their def- uh, checks their play. Look at how this front is lined up. And then watch what happens post-snap, okay? This is the striker outside linebacker. We talked about him yesterday. This position is always going to be your hybrid guy. You always got to know where this guy is on the field. So the offensive line is making their calls. They start off here in a Dave Veranda tight front with uh, two B-gap, four-eye techniques. Just imagine if you're Max Johnson or you're this quarterback here, and pre-snap, this motion guy, the striker, runs with them. Now, this coverage guy is sliding more center field. So this striker, who was on the line, is now 12 yards away from the snap. And now, this coverage is rolling over, and the guy that is blitzing is the guy that you didn't even see. Corner blitz coming hot. And believe it or not, we actually protect this well. Hawaii. Uh, DT gets beat to the inside a little too easy here. But we pick up this corner blitz. This was actually good communication. And honestly, this is why these coverage flips are really tough. Okay? Okay. He's looking to the left, okay? Once he saw that this was covered, there was a little window here for the tight end, okay? He should have just hit right here, okay? His head's already in that direction. It's third and 10, make it a manageable fourth down. It's two down territory. So this is bad quarterback awareness here uh, to not just take some yards and make it a manageable fourth. He decides to scramble, which isn't bad either. To pick up the yard. But once again, it is blistering hot. Your protection had been bad. Your team is bad. And <laughs> the guy who was the uh, the field side end who was on the line of scrimmage, that striker position, the next thing you know, he is 12 yards off the line of scrimmage. That is extremely difficult to read. So now this is a play, if you're an LSU fan, you are absolutely going to love, okay? Because Max Johnson will feast if he gets this look, okay? So, kind of in the same thing. This time, the striker is all the way off the line of scrimmage, pre-snap, all right? So, the wide receiver notices something. The corner is a little bit to the inside here. So, the wide receiver said, hey, this guy's coming. They rotate this guy over, so essentially the same exact look, and we get essentially the same exact defensive play. Wide receiver was right. He called out the blitz. He could have just hit him right there. But once again, it's fourth to nine. We got to get all the yards. But look at the routes Hawaii chooses to run. All short routes, but remember the play before? The tight end was wide open over the middle. Hawaii said, we're just going to run a one-man route, basically, for this first down. And guess what? They get it! Until he drops it. Max Johnson, remember that stat? He was 7-7 of on throws over the middle from 11 to 20 yards. Okay? This is his best spot of the field last year. Uh, this is going to be good for LSU if, if they can attack the middle of the field. So here we go. Why did I single out Austin Deculus for this episode? Because look, Cam Wire, the other offensive tackle, uh, wasn't even expected to start. And it kind of stinks because Dare Rosenthal was playing so well in the spring. And for him to leave the team like that is uh, not great for the rest of this unit, especially considering Cam Wire was by far LSU's most versatile offensive lineman on this team. Um so it would have been nice to have him as a backup or potentially 
the starting right guard. So there's a few reasons why I want to single out Austin Deculus. And I know you're probably thinking, well, he's Max Johnson's blind side. And that's partially true, okay? So, yes, the blind side is very important. But there's some other reasons. Obviously, the first is this guy has championship experience. He is by far the most well-rounded, experienced player LSU has on this team, a starter on the 2019 National Championship team, member of Leadership Council, SEC Media Day member. Um, You know, this guy is just an affable, great guy to be around by all accounts. Um, That's part of it. We need him to lead this group. And if Jason Hines is the starter, who was by far LSU's, uh, I guess you could say, most inconsistent offensive lineman, well, that right tackle is going to have to pick up a lot of the slack if that continues going into next year. But there's actually a more technical reason why Austin Deculus is so huge. Because you've seen in this film that the right tackle for Hawaii was attacked very heavily from these last two film studies. So, the reason why this is very important is because of the Raider and the striker position. So, yesterday and throughout this film study, you've learned about the UCLA defense. So, Um, You look at LSU's offense, last year Max Johnson completed and attempted more passes to the left hash, which makes sense, he's a left-handed quarterback, and in theory, LSU is going to run the football to the left side more than the right. When you have Ed Ingram and Cam Wire, who to me are the better run blockers of the side of the offensive line, more than likely they are going to run to the left side of the line of scrimmage. So, we could see an LSU game where the ball is primarily on the left hash. So, let's bring back this handy chart right here from Chris Osgood on how UCLA lines up their defense. And if you're watching at home, this would be something very fun for you to do to get into the mind of a defensive coordinator. So, the way they actually call their defense is the wide side of the formation is always going to have a defensive end with their hand in the dirt. And the near side, or the side closer to the sideline, which is called the boundary, will have a defensive end, otherwise known in this defense as a Raider, in a two-point stance. Or in other words, standing up. But if LSU is going to primarily be on the left hash, and once again, football is random, that might not even be the case. But let's just say that is the case. That means Austin Deculus is going to be going up a defensive end, that's always going to have his hand in the dirt. Now, just based on me watching Austin Deculus over the years, I see that he has had more trouble with ends that have their hand in the dirt. Also, this is a little bit different because in some defenses, the wide side of the formation end is actually in a two-point stance and the boundary side defensive end, just depending on your certain type of technique. So be on the lookout for that because... You know, when these lighter pass rushers fire off low in a three-point stance, they can get the edge on Austin Deculus. And he's also had uh, success with three-point stances and issues with two-point stances. But it is just a very small observation. And something else is UCLA can get really exotic um, with this side of the formation with all the different kind of blitzes that they could throw at you. Blitz pickup's going to be key, and sometimes it just comes down to beating the man in front of you. I actually pulled this guy's rookie card, Osa, I can't even say his last name. Anyway, uh, this is one of my favorite blitzes that UCLA runs. Okay, four-man front, we have two, three techs. As an offensive guard, that sucks because you're going to be in a one-on-one situation more than likely. So the center's like, okay, both my A-gaps are open. I need to help whoever goes through whichever A-gap. But, of course, he knows that either one of these guys can blitz. But guess what happens? Both guys actually blitz, okay? And both guys actually pick it up, okay? The problem, though, was our DT, Osa, who's in the NFL special, hit him with this three-tech swim move, okay? Right guard, just way off balance. And look at that swim move over the top. Aaron Donald type of stuff. That was my favorite move as a pass rusher. And this is a mobile quarterback. This is Jaden Daniels. Okay? Now, this is the issue 
that LSU struggled with, with Max Johnson, okay? When you have these layered blitzes, if the quarterback is able to escape, they have these linebackers that are able to see that. And let's just say Jaden Daniels is able to get around that. This linebacker would have been right there to pick it up anyway. Okay? So that goes to show you we didn't even go through most of UCLA's blitz packages. Uh, You just got to be ready to go. And I hope you guys enjoyed that little bonus play. And that was on the right hash, okay? <laughs> Sometimes you could pick blitzes up and your guys still get whipped. So it's it's going to be an interesting matchup uh, for LSU's offensive line. I actually think that I actually think they can do it. I, I'm once again optimist me, sure thing. But you notice in this film study we didn't mention Keishon Butte's name. And as long as you have that guy on the field, you always have a chance. Uh, But you obviously have to protect in order to get the football out to him and LSU's talented wide receivers. And then you get into how much help should we bring the tight end to help block? And is Cole Taylor's blocking better? You know, you get into all these different questions, but ultimately it just comes down to in one-on-ones, you just got to make plays. You just do, (laughs) especially now. I mean, offensive line play is so different. So much of it now just comes down to one-on-ones. And uh, hopefully LSU's offensive line is ready to go for that. Hope you enjoyed this. Obviously, drop a comment down below. Do you believe in this LSU pass protection going into next week? Uh, I, I, I'm i hoping for the best, baby. Let's do it. Come on, Deculus. Let's do it. Let's go. It is. Power. Our. LSU. Boom. I think we're doing... Uh, Low main tonight. Let's go.